Hi, I'm Tim Weissman. I'm really glad you're back. Today we're going to talk about offensive attacks in air hockey and specifically the idea of a credible threat. Air hockey offense is a dance of power, deception, and timing. At its core, at the highest levels, I believe it's ultimately a game of rock, paper, scissors in which you aren't guessing, just your opponent is. To be great, you don't need every single type of shot. You need three. Some folks have even done it with two, but that does require amazing accuracy and for both of the two shots to hit opposite sides of the goal. Of course, having lots of options is great, but don't get bogged down thinking you have to be able to hit all the various shots in order to beat great players. All you need are a few legitimate, credible threats which pair well with each other. Mix in some creativity and you have an attack. Let's talk about credible threats. A credible threat is a shot that you can consistently score on an opponent. Without a credible threat, you likely won't score much. If you're new to air hockey, you need to practice puck control and shot accuracy for a while until you develop the consistency needed for credible threats. That's fine. Check out a video I made on developing puck control. I'll link it below. If you're ready to work on your attacks, choose which shot you want to be your leading credible threat. Pick your best shot, execute it off your best setup, and then figure out what other shots will pair well with it. For example, let's say I feel like my cut shot executed off of a circle drift is my best shot. I need to pick another shot which will hit the opposite side of the goal. In this case, I'll choose a right wall under. My tactic in my match will be to start scoring my best shot first, make my opponent concerned about the shot. In essence, make it a credible threat in their mind. Another option might be a cross straight paired with a left wall under. That works too, as both shots enter opposite corners of the goal. Once I establish the credible threat, my opponent will start adjusting on defense, paying more attention to the shot, focusing in on how I'm setting it up, where I'm hitting it from. Many folks hear this and they think, that's bad news. I believe the exact opposite is the truth. It's wonderful news, because now that I have a credible threat, which my opponent is focusing on, I can start hitting the paired shot, in this case, a right wall under. The idea here is that a credible threat of the cut has opened my opponent up to the right wall under. I need the threat on one side of the goal to soften up the defense on the opposite side. The key is to make both shots look the same during the setup. If I shoot my cut and right wall under from different spots with different setups and different drift speeds, my opponent will see this pretty quickly and be able to shut my offense down easily. I want my setups for my paired shots to look as similar as possible, removing any tells from the drift, wind up, and release. Another example of pairing shots could be under the mallet and over the mallet banks. For example, you can start off hitting left wall unders, establishing it as a credible threat to your opponent. Once your opponent starts keying in on the shot and anticipating it, you start to mix in the left wall over, delivered slightly slower than the under, giving your opponent time to pull back far enough to let the puck cross in front of his or her mallet. Once you start hitting the over, your opponent will be guessing on defense, giving you a lot of goals. Of course, it doesn't always go according to the plan. Sometimes we play opponents that know our game very well. They know our best shots and what to look out for. So you have a couple of choices in establishing the initial credible threat. You can make subtle adjustments to your best shots until you find the exact setup, release, and speed where they score. Or you can establish the secondary shot early, then move to your strongest shot next. Either way, a credible threat has to be established for your offensive attack to spark 
so that you get ahead of your opponent in the mental rock, paper, scissors game. Even then, players with the best defenses in the sport will be able to adjust and read small differences in our shots in order to block our attack. We've all been there, where we've been scoring almost at will, game after game, then suddenly we're getting shut down, or we start to feel stagnant and our shots just aren't falling. My best suggestion for you when this happens is to begin making very small changes to how you're setting up and releasing your shots. Slow your drift down or speed it up. Wind up on your shots longer or shorter. Drift with slightly different angles. Hit three or four of the same shot in a row, subtly adjusting timing until you break through. It's like a dam that you have to crack chipping away over and over until it breaks and you start seeing the back of the goal again. Stay consistent and keep trying small changes until you crack the code and reestablish a credible threat. A final tip is that once you establish an attack on an opponent, don't remain complacent and wait until they adjust before you start making your own adjustments. That's losing the mental rock, paper, scissors game. Be proactive and make your own small adjustments to keep your attack fresh, staying one step ahead of your opponent the whole match. For example, I might establish a cut early on in the match, executed off a left rail drift. Rather than staying with the exact same cut until my opponent shuts it down, maybe I start mixing in some cuts on the first part of the drift rather than after the bounce off of the rail. This can keep my opponent unsettled and uncertain. Maintaining the cut as a credible threat will keep the opposite side of the goal soft and keep me ahead in the mental rock, paper, scissors game. Keep practicing and I'll see you next time. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the channel so we can keep growing the sport of air hockey.